what, what's it called there. Uh, I also have it in, um, uh, whoops, I've just clicked something on the computer. Sorry about that. Um, yes, I also, if you click on the link up in the description, you'll see that I've got um, the Spidalon thread in those little, um, in that category as well. So all of that is, is there and available. Uh, so now let's begin with our first little diagram just here. So what I need to do, I've got my thread, I've got about a meter of thread, that's all you need. Um, you leave, so what I'm going to do first is pick up four of the crystal beads. Now I've got something new which I hope you'll like uh, and I'm going to try it out today. So tell me if you if you like it or not. So to make sure that we can see what I'm doing and you can see the instruction, what I've done is, bing, I've got it so that you can see what I'm doing and I've got the instruction in the corner there. So I'll just zoom in a little because I know that people like it when they can really see what I'm doing. So I know I have to work just here. So what I'm going to do now, I need to first of all pick up Four little crystals. How's that looking, by the way, um, with the with the little instruction in the corner there? Do we like that, or do you prefer to see it whole on the big screen? Because uh, I can do it both ways and then just demonstrate um, purely on the screen. But we'll see what people think of it just there with it being in the corner. So I, I'll uh, I can leave that. So so tell me what you think. Um, we've got Anita who's just dropped in on YouTube. Hi, Anita. Um, Ida, I love the cream and gold together. Thank you. Uh, Kelly, good morning. Um, lovely to of you all to join us. Um, so now I've got my, my four crystals just here. What I need to do now is I'm going to leave myself a tail of thread off the end here. And I'm going to pick up... Um, so if you have a little look, you can see these are crystal donut beads. So they're not meant to be fully rounded. They're, they're sort of this donut shape where they're a little bit wider in the middle. And then uh, so you can see this sort of length is four millimeters, a little bit longer. And this way is a three millimeter. So it gives you this really lovely effect. Um, anyway, um, thank you, Ida, that you like the directions in the corner. Uh, I do want to know what people think of that. Um, Anita also says it looks good. So anyway, I've got those. And what I need to do now is pick up, you can see in the little diagram in the corner there, I need one seed bead, one crystal. Ooh, if I can pick him up, where's the hole? And one more little seed bead there. So what I'm going to do here is sort of with my thread, that is um, coming off here. What I need to do, wait, let's flip my camera, shall we? So that it's for you right-handed people. Um, so what I'm going to do is I need to, this way it'll hopefully, oh, whoops, I only did it once. What a silly person. Um, here we go. So what I'm going to do is, there we go. Now, now it looks more like the, the diagram there. So what I'm going to do, oh, come on now, is take my thread back through this first little crystal that I've added at the beginning. So with my thread, I'll just, I've got these four crystals and then a seed bead, a crystal and a seed bead, go through this little bead just here. And then as I pull that tight, Daphne, good morning in Canada. Lovely of you to join. Um, so here we go. So there is sort of the same gist of what I was doing. So my thread is going into this little bead just here. And now if we have a look at the next diagram, I'll put it on the big screen to start with. Here we go. So what I need to do now is pick up two more of my crystals, which I'll do that just now. And what we do is with everything staying kind of loose as it is at the minute, what we need to do is sort of loop back so I'll just pop it back onto my main screen just here. Wait a second. Here we go with the instruction in the corner. Um, here we go. So what I'm going to do now is I've picked up two more little crystal beads just here. And what I'm going to do is pass into this bead that's just before this pair of um, this this little seed bead crystal seed bead um, if that 
So what I'm going to do is one side of the thread goes this way, then I loop around and add on two crystals and then go through this crystal just here. So I'm sort of passing back into it so that when I pull everything tight, hopefully we'll start to see you can pull them in opposite directions, but you've got to just try and keep your threads sort of this is about the hardest part of the entire instruction by the way so you'll see it's all a very very easy little clasp that we're going to make but see how when you pull that the little section uh that we added which is the seed bead the crystal and the seed bead they pop nicely onto the top of your um little piece just here so i'll just try and get that nice and firm on both sides here and what i'm going to do this uh is just to make my life a little bit easier in terms of keeping the shape nice and firm. I'm going to weave around so that I can tie these two threads together. So I'll just show you the next diagram so that you can see what it is that I've made here. Um, here we go, let's show you the next diagram. So see how you've got that little piece where it's um, uh one two three four five six little crystals at the bottom and then you've got the one at the top so i'll just pop it back to me here uh there we go so if we have a little look at that one there what i'm going to do is just weave around so that my two threads are coming out the same bead again because that will allow me to tie it nice and tightly got to make sure i keep my threads in the right place they're getting a little tangled all of a sudden i think have i just done yes i just done the wrong thread ha <laughs> ha aren't i silly these sorts of things happen when you're doing live videos don't they so i'll just undo this little fella just here go back out hopefully it hasn't caught no so you can see wait let's pull it nice and tight again i'm actually dealing with this thread so i need to weave around till i get to my tail so that was a bit of a mistake but thankfully it's a very easy one to fix um now, Mary, thank you for explaining so well. Thank you, Mary. I'm glad you're uh, finding it so clear. So anyway, um, let's just weave down that side. It doesn't matter if it goes a little bit loose. The whole point of what we're about to do is to try and help that from happening anymore. So as I pull that nice and firm, pull both threads separately until it's lovely and tight there. Let's try and... There we go. That's the sort of level of tightness that we want. Just pull that to the side. I'm going to tie these two threads together now so that it will keep that shape. So which one's my tail thread? Here we go. Use my tail thread. I'll just do like a, a little weaver, a, a little overhand, not a surgeon's knot, which is left over right, left over right twice. Um, whoops, there we go. There we go. Wait, there we are. So through there and then just pull that nice and firm get it nice and tight and then hopefully that will stay quite nicely so i'll just do one more knot just to really lock it in place on top just a simple one and then pull there we go and now we've got the sort of the startings of our little flower shape coming together there we go how's that looking perfect now, I'm really liking the um, the gold and the the uh, the cream together. Um, just in case you whoops wrong way. Uh, just in case you didn't see the the little um, kit uh, what I've got here. So I'm using. Oh, I need to. Whoops. Uh, here we go. There we go. Now we can read it. So the seed bead I'm using is PSB ten one eight one eight four dash fifty. So you can get that from our website. And then the other one is um, the the CD34, um, CD34006. Uh, Evelyn's just asked, how do I send us a picture? Um, if you need to contact us, Evelyn, the best way is to send an email to info at beadspider.co.uk. Um, that way we will, everyone will get that one. So anyway, let's now continue along uh, with our next little step. So if I make it look nice and big, what we're going to do now, because this is quite a nice, simple, quick little clasp to make, what I'm going to do now is pick up five 
little seed beads. So I'll just pop it into the quarter now so that you can see. So one, two, three, four, five little seed beads there. And then I'll just rotate this a bit so it's a bit more, a bit easier for me to see. So keep your tail thread out of the way. And what we're going to do now is just with five little beads, we're going to skip our first crystal. So our thread is coming out of this bead just here. So if you have a look at the picture in the corner, ooh, I can do this. This works quite well. So this little thread, which is this one here, if you see it on the picture, it's going to crystal the first one, and we're going to go around and into the next crystal around the, the little... Um, loop just there so hopefully that that makes sense let's just wait a second oh is my camera still working oh i had a bit of a pause for a second there sorry about that i had to just uh make a little change so that it would start working again so if the camera's paused for a second don't worry about that um now so this one just here take my 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 little beads and go around that loop just there and pull that nice and tight. Kelly, it's amazing how you can remember all of the codes. Well, Kelly, I have to fill a lot of orders for people and you get used to all of these different code numbers. Plus we try and do them so that they're kind of intuitive. I mean, the number is a little bit more difficult, but generally we do them so that the codes make sense. So in this case, the, the three by fours, they're CD, which is crystal donut, three, four, because they're three by four. And then the color number just goes at the end. So that's why this one is color number six. So anyway, now that my thread, I've just sort of put it around the loop. Let's have a look at the next uh, instruction here. So the next diagram, what I'm going to do is continue around my little um, little uh, crystal loop of crystal flowers so far and add on more little groups of five around the edges. So if we have a little look, I'll just grab the next um, little thread. Where are we? Let's just bring it back to the corner. So what I'm going to do is pick up five more seed beads. One, two, three, four, five more seed beads. And I'm going to, with my thread coming out of this bead just here, I'm going to skip around this crystal and thread through this one here which is the next crystal around so we just thread into that just here pull that nice and tightly get that nice and firm let's pull my tail thread a little tighter again as well so there we go hopefully we'll sort of start to there we go when we pull it nice and tight you can see we get let's zoom in a bit more shall we because I really want it when I like it when people can really see what's going on. It's uh, I really like the the quality of this this camera and the the program that I'm using allows me to um to really zoom in. So I quite like that because if you when you're doing these beading tutorials, you really do need to see what what's going on. So that's why I try and do them as as clearly as possible. Anita, what size is the crystal? So it's a three by four millimeter. So it's three millimeters from hole to hole and four millimeters wide is the crystal. Um, uh, so that's the size of it. And it's a, a sort of a donut shape. You may also know them as rondel shape so we uh, that's the 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 other name that you might hear them as so donuts or rondels it's the same thing so anyway i'll just pick up five more little seed beads um and i'm going to loop around and into this next crystal here by the way i'll just uh, i'll just do that first and then there's something i want to mention because um I'll go just through the crystal first, not the seed bead. I'm going to go through it in a minute, but for now, I'll just go through this, the crystal. So anyway, um, yes, there's a little something I want to mention. So what I've been doing in the recent... That looks fantastic. Great. Um, so, um, Anita, by the way, if you just click the link in the description, uh, it'll take you to where I've got loads of different products, sort of like what I'm using today. So this particular seed bead and this crystal, they're definitely on that page. So if you want to get those, head to the link in the description. It's on Facebook and it's also on um, on 
YouTube, that's the one. Um, so yes, so now that I've got this just here, there's a little something, I'll just take a quick break. Um, wow, and we've got someone watching from Nigeria. How fantastic is that? Thanks for letting us know. That makes me so happy. Um, Pat Clyde, will four mil fire polish work? Yeah, I mean, they'll, I think you might find a three mil works better. Uh, because the distance from hole to hole is three millimeters. So I think that will work uh, better than a four mil um, pat. Um, so yes, um, a little something that I'll just mention real quick uh, is where if I put it, I've got a little picture I have somewhere. No. Oh, well, for now, I'll just put this one just here. So um, what we have been doing lately is people who want to be part of our shows, because we do lots, we do streams every Wednesday and every uh, Saturday at 1 p.m. If you want to be part of the show, we showcase people's jewelry. So if you have sent in, uh, if you want to send us a picture of what you've been making and what you've been doing lately, we will show it up on the screen. Uh, if you want to be um, on on the show as well, we we wanna we wanna put it on so that you can see it as well. So for example, we we were sent a lady. This is based on the tutorial I did on Saturday. Jan from Derby, Belper in Derby. She sent us a lovely picture of her um, her bracelet which is the the venetian bracelet which is the tutorial i did on saturday she's already made her she made it along with me and um so thank you very very much jan for sending that picture in but like i said if you want your pictures to get shown um definitely send us an email the email address is live at beadspider.co.uk um if you're on youtube i think i've put it at the link but otherwise it's going to show uh, just here in a second. What I will do though is if I can find it, here we go. Here's the information for you all. Um, I will just pop it on the screen. Uh, so yes, let's just switch over to that one. So yeah, here we go. Get featured on the show, email us your pictures live at beadspider.co.uk and I'm not going to do it at the end of this show because this one's only going to be a, a relatively short one, but on um, Saturday. So I'm going to do it on Saturdays. So make sure you send us your pictures um, to live at beadspider.co.uk before Saturday, and I'll try and get them featured on um, on the next show. So anyway, uh, coming back to what I'm making just here, this is where we are. Uh, Monica in Malaysia, thanks for joining. Again, another international uh, person. So definitely jump on um, the website and grab the pattern if you want to be making along as well. I've put the description up the top, so jump on and have a look at that. So anyway, the next step that we're going to do, I'll just show you the photo. I've made this nice little pattern here, so that's five beads around. Um, if we have a little look, the next step that we're going to do um, is, oh no, I was a bit too early. Oh yes, I did, I did. So what we have to do is I have to thread around so that my thread is coming out, I'll just put it on the screen again, uh, if I put it here. So what I'm going to need to do is have my, I'm currently got my thread coming out of the crystal, but if you have a look at the diagram, so see how, wait, let's see if this works. Oh, how good is this? I can point to the diagrams, I like this. So anyway, so see this little thread sticking out here. What I need to do with my thread coming out here is weave through this lot of five beads so that I'm coming out just after the fifth seed bead there. So that's my little plan of what I need to do now. So also, by the way, see how nice this little tension is? You can thank the Spidalon beading thread for that because it's got that sort of um, wax feel about it because it's bonded. Uh, it works really, really nicely to help you keep your tension. So that's looking really good. So anyway, what I'm going to do, as per our little diagram just here, I'm going to weave through these five little beads just here. So one, two, three, through the fourth. 
you know, I want to keep my tension tight, so I won't try and squeeze through all five just yet. Let's just, oops, pushed, pushed it out of screen there. And then here we are. So, yeah, what do people think about my... Um, my my little diagrams in the corner thing it's new today so uh tell me tell me definitely what you think of of the the diagram being up there in uh in the corner just here i i uh do we like it or should i just do you just want to see what i'm doing and then shall i flick to the instructions so that you can see them really clearly like this what, what, how, tell me how you prefer it would you prefer it with the screen like this and then i just show you the instructions or do you like it with the little instruction in the corner like that. So let me know, let me know. Um, <clears throat> so what I'm going to do now, if we just have a look at the big instruction picture, next step, what I have to do, the photo, oh, I think I've got the wrong photo on just here. But anyway, so just ignore the little seed bead at the bottom here. So what I'm going to do, you can see I have to weave through the next lot of five seed beads after I pick up a bunch of seed beads. So I'll just show you on the diagram. If we ignore the fifth little seed bead, we don't pick up five, we pick up four <coughs> seed beads. So ignore, ignore the fifth seed bead that's in that little diagram. We only want to pick up four. So let me just rotate it around a bit so it's a bit easier for me to work with. So what I'm doing, my thread's coming out of this seed bead here. I'm going to pick up one, two, three, four little seed beads like that. Jackie, instructions in the corner are a keeper. Kelly, I think it's a good idea to have them up in the corner. Jermaine likes them. Mary, the diagram looks very good. Thank you. I'm glad. I think I am going to keep it like that because uh, I think it looks, it makes it easier for everyone to follow. And then that way, if you've been watching my previous videos, I won't accidentally forget to turn off the diagram uh, so you can actually see what I'm doing. So anyway, coming out this seed bead, go around this crystal and then through all five seed beads on this edge here. So we just go through one, two, three, four, pull through just four for now. Oh, um, and then also through the fifth one just here. So when I pull that tight, hopefully, there we go, lovely. So that will now start to seed bead around the edge of all of our little crystals just here. So what I'm going to do next, let's pull my little tail thread a bit tighter, pull this one, is let's just have a look at the next diagram. I'm going to add seed beads around uh, the edge on each one. So I know the, the diagram looks a little bit loose, but um, this is why we do four seed beads and not five, because we want them to be a little bit tighter than what that diagram shows. I've got the wrong pictures up. We've changed the pictures in the instructions. So if you're getting the, the instructions from our website, um, you, you'll get the proper pictures with the right text and everything. So, um, so anyway, now I'll just rotate it round again so it's easier for me to work with. I'll pick up one, two, three four little seed beads again, and then I'll slide them down a bit, pull my thread nice and tight. Now, um, also, hopefully, hopefully, like, because I work on the table, it definitely makes the task a bit more difficult for me. Hopefully, it's really clear and easy for you guys to see. That's why I work on the table, because I find that it's so much easier to follow for you as the viewer. So I, I, I suffer through it a bit. Um, with the working rather than doing it in my in my hands i try and do it on the table so you can all see really clearly because i i uh, i'm doing it for you so i might as well struggle a little bit just to make it nice and easy for you to view because you'll definitely find it's easier to keep a nice firm tension if you're keeping it in your fingers so anyway um let's just continue weaving through one two three little beads here yeah, so um, a question we regularly get asked, why are you using Preciosa seed beads and not my Yuki or Toho or whatever? I personally really, really like using the Czech 
ones. There's quite a few reasons why I like check seed beads. So when it comes to the sizing of seed beads, the size 10 seed beads uh, in, in the check sizing system are the same size as your size 11 in Japanese seed beads. So if you ever see a little, um, <clears throat> yeah, if you ever see a, um, a little size comparison chart, which I, I do have one, but maybe I'll show it next time. The size of your size 10 check seed beads, they, they, they are the same diameter as your your tohos and your um and your mayukis in size 11 seed beads delicas are a whole other size but preciosa ones um and and, and are the same as those size 11 seed beads the only difference is the width of the bead so um i think tohos are the fattest little ones like this so the the distance from hole to hole is a little bit bigger in toho mayuki are a little bit finer and then preciosa are sort of that in between size now one thing that i really like about um the czech ones is how many colors they have i was just looking it up uh just yesterday how many colors they actually have and it turns out they do three thousand colors of beads 3,000 colors of seed beads, sorry. So that's another reason I really like them because um, glass making has a, a, a huge history in, in the Czech Republic. They've been doing it since uh, the Bohemian era. era. So, um, you know, quite a few hundred years now that they've, they've been specializing in glass making. Um, so because of that, they, they do really interesting and creative things with their with their beadwork and their colors and their shapes and sizes and things. So um, if you've never used them before, I really do recommend having a go at trying out some Preciosa um, seed beads. Size 10 and size 11, it doesn't matter what pattern you've got. If you've got patterns from elsewhere, you, you should be able to just swap them one for one pretty much. Um, which which is a, a feature of of size 11 uh, size 10s I, I really like so anyway you can sort of see it's really starting to come together now um so let's just take a look at the next little diagram here so oops sorry wrong thing just there this is the button i wanted there we go so what i need to do now is create um a little structure on the base on the back side not the little top side which uh which you see in my my little um that i've been working on and what i'm going to do is sort of create a little wait i'll see if i can show you a better picture of it um, a little bridge between the two sides so see that photo there how i'm going to create a little bridge from one side to the other i'm going to do that twice to create like a nice little structure on the back of my um, little crystal piece just here on the back of my flower. So what I need to do just now, if you have a look, the thread, it's good that the photo is nice and black. Good morning, by the way, to Bernadette, who's just joined us. Um, uh, what I need to do is go from one side of my, uh, my work there and then all the way across. Oh, Jermaine's just reminded me that size 10 Preciosa also have a larger hole than the Mayuki size 11s, which I forgot to mention that. So it does mean you can go through them more times with your thread. Anyway, um, so yes, I'm going to create that little thread bridge by going across the back of my, my little piece just there. So if we have a look just here, what I need to do first and foremost is turn over. To the back so see that there's the back of my work just there something you can do i won't do it during the tutorial just now but i do recommend that you do it because uh it really sort of helps to bring the flower shape together is if you use your tail thread you can do it at this point because it's a lot easier to access uh, everything. But if you take, oh, go on, I'll just do it. I'll just do it to show you. So anyway, um, this isn't uh, the uh, the um, the this isn't in the instructions, but I do recommend it. So this is why it's worth watching my little tutorial videos because you get tips and tricks and things. By the way, if anyone's got any questions, comment them, ask them, ask me. I want to uh, have a conversation with you. So anyway, I'll just use my tail thread once more. 
I've just got my tail thread. I'll go through one here. So I'm going to go around my little ring to get it super firm and super tight just to really accentuate that flower shape. Um, this is a good time to do it before we cover the back up. So I'll go through there, through there, rotate it around, try and keep it in the middle of the screen. Wait, here, I'll do it so you can see everything. Here we go. Oh, actually, do you know what? Just in case you're wondering what materials I'm using, here they are at the bottom. So if you want to get these same materials, you can see them just there at the bottom there. But don't forget, we have a, um, if, if you didn't hear it already, we have um, a little uh, bundle of 3x4 crystals where you get quite a few colors of three by four crystals if you buy more than one set by the way we'll try and give you different colors so you don't get the same colors um but yeah we're doing 20 percent off on our three by four crystal bundle so if you have a look in the link in the description um that's where you'll find those and it's a great way because they're such versatile little beads it's the perfect time to try them out because they're all on sale so anyway i'm just going around my little circle once more with my tail thread to get it super firm. Here we go, one. And then once more, and last bead. And then when I pull that nice and tightly, there we go. So we get that nice firmness. I know my fingers are in the way. Um, Oh, I just broke my tail thread. How silly of me. Oh, well, I'll have to undo that. But anyway, uh, so what we're going to do now is I'll just go back to my main thread just here. And I'm going to create that little wrap around uh, that little base structure. Um, Evelyn, you do brighten up this gloomy weather. Thanks, Evelyn. I appreciate that. That's very kind of you to say. Um, so yeah, if we have a look at the little uh, diagram again, here is that little photo just there. What I need to do now is just pick up seven little seed beads and I'm going to weave around one, two, three, four. Let's put it into the corner. How good's that? Uh, there we go. Put it in the corner and I'll just move this so it's a bit easy to see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, um, oh, Kelly, how's your tea going? Thanks for reminding me. It's now, wait, let's find out. It's cold. It's cold, as always. Oh, well, doesn't matter. If I'm lucky, I'm just going to speak a little loudly, just in case anybody upstairs is listening to me now. If I'm lucky, someone lovely upstairs might warm my tea for me. <laughs> we'll see if she heard or not, or if she's just going to ignore me. I'd say she'll probably ignore me. Um, but yes. Oh, I hear movement upstairs. Um, so... What I'm going to do, I've picked up my seven little seed beads here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Can you see them all? No, there they are. Seven little beads. So what I need to do is jump across to the next little, um, to the other side. So if we just jump on over, oh, Maxine, she's even commented, you're lucky I like you. I'm Clearly she's watching my stream. So anyway, if I just jump on over, I'm coming out of this bead just here. And what I need to do now is jump over and across. And because my thread's coming out this way, I'm going to go in the opposite side, all the way around on the opposite uh, little... Um, seed bead on the far side so if we have a little look you can maybe you can see it just in here there's a tiny little thread bridge that's joining this crystal to this thread so what i need to do is look on the opposite side and find where that thread bridge is again so here's the little thread bridge on the opposite side so i need to go into this crystal here because that one is a seed bead sorry this seed bead here because that's joining two of the crystals um now Oh, I've got a lovely warm tea coming now. Uh, so anyway, let's go through that seed bead. And then as I pull it tight, let's try and make it look exactly like the diagram. So don't forget, I'm working on the back section here. We go over the top and then pull, pull, pull nice and tight. And then see how we get that little 
reinforcement across the back. So let's just have a look at the instruction. There we go. So exactly the same as how I've got mine. Oh, and do you know what I've got? Do you know what I've got? A lovely, ooh, wait, let's uh, just jump on over. There we go. I've got a fresh cup of tea. I know it looked horrendously way too zoomed in, but now I have a lovely hot cup of tea. Thank you very much to Maxine for making that one. So anyway, um, my, uh, you know, my better half. Um, so there we go. Now what I've got to do, now that I've made my nice little thread bridge, you can see that's nice and firm, looks exactly like my diagram. So if we look at the next instruction, pull that, and what I have to do is, oh wait, I mean, let's just go back a photo. Ah, okay, so that's not, that's what I've missed. So you can see my thread, I guess the diagram's upside down. So I've made the thread bridge and I'm coming through the bottom. So what I have to do is weave around if we have a look i'll show you with my needle hopefully just here at the bottom um there we go so with my where are we here we go so with my thread coming out just here at this little bottom piece what i need to do is go through one two three four five little seed beads so that i'm coming out this is difficult i tell you uh, just on that little seed bead. So see where the thread's coming out of? I need to go around that little corner, just there, with uh, with my thread. Um, Stacy says you should get an electric tea warming plate. Do you know what? I think that's uh, the uh, the right the right idea for me, isn't it? Um, so yes, the the diagrams they are upside down from how I'm doing them, but I prefer prefer to work sort of the other way. I guess to make it easier, I could do it upside down. And what I need to do, there we go. See, now it looks exactly the same. I need to go through, I'm coming out of this bead and I need to go through one, two, three. And then it's this bead here, which you'll know it because if you have a little look just closely, hopefully we can see it in there, but there's a thread bridge that joins this crystal to this seed bead. So that's the seed bead we need to be coming out of. So I'll just weave through it, try and keep my fingers out the way. So in this case, because I've already gone through one bead, I need to go through four now. So that will be those full five beads. Um, pull that there through. And there we go, pull, pull, pull. That helps keep everything nice and firm. And what I'm going to do now is if we just have a look at the next diagram, oops, wrong way, there we are, having a look at the next diagram, here we go, I need to pick up just three seed beads. So this is why we did seven earlier, is because you've got three seed beads, one in the middle, and then another three seed beads at the other end. So you can see, because it's an odd number of beads, you've got the same number of beads on both sides. So this time I need to pick up three little seed beads. So let's just flick back over to that one. So one, oops, one, two, three little seed beads. And then what I'm gonna do is just, wait a minute, let's just rotate it. This is why I was doing it the other way so that I can work my normal way. Um, so anyway, what I'm gonna do is pick up my three seed beads, slide them down on my thread. And then, as I said just before, pull it nice and tight so this thread bridge is nice and firm as well. Um, I'm going to just go so I can see up here, one, two, three, and then this is the middle of my bridge, bead number four. So if I go through bead number four, try and get my finger out of the light there, through bead number four, pull that nice and firm. By the way, if you enjoy my tutorials and you like them very much and you find that uh, they're really helpful and easy to follow, help me out and share them. Share this post with people um, who you know enjoy beading or any bead groups that you know uh, that enjoy doing beading as well. Because, um, you know, the more we spread the word and it's your help, because if you enjoy it, hopefully I uh, I. 
um, you'll you'll want to share it with those you know. So if there's people you know who you think will enjoy this video, either tag them in the comments, because uh, or you can share the post on your, um, you know, you just hit share and and that will share it to, to either bead groups or on your wall or whatever. And hopefully other people will also be able to enjoy my tutorials because I'm sort of, I much prefer to, to do things organically, to have people spread the word organically rather than just sort of pay for my likes as it were, because I really want people who enjoy the beading tutorials to follow along rather than just sort of paying for, for my likes, as it were. Uh, but yeah, so let's just jump to the next little diagram. So I'll just show it really big. I've gone through that middle bead. One second, there you go, you can see it. What I need to do now is pick up another three little beads just here. And then same as before, I need to attach to the little seed bead that's between uh, the little uh, sort of where the, the little thread base is, um, where, where my thread bridge will join to a seed bead. So if I have a little look just down here, where, wait a minute, let's go back to my main image. Here we go. Bernadette shared to the public. Thank you so much, Bernadette. I really appreciate that. But yeah, as I've said, if you if you can share it, I, I would be forever grateful to you because... I, uh, I'm, I'm really wanting to have these videos sort of go go the distance and have people see them and learn about them and, and, and sort of encourage people to try beading because it's a lot easier than you would think. So anyway, um, here we go. So these three little beads here, if I have a little look, my, I've got, I don't know if you'll be able to quite see it, but in this gap here, there's a little thread bridge and it goes from here to this little seed bead. So what I need to do, this will make sure that my piece stays symmetrical. I will thread through that last little seed bead there. And then as I pull that tight, there we go. How nice is that? Exactly like our little diagram there at the back. So um, <clears throat> uh, there we go. So there we are. That gets that really lovely. And that's that back all nice and sorted. Let's just... Uh, see now, that's pretty much all that you need to do for this uh, particular tutorial. When it comes to finishing it off, what I'm going to do now is just get it ready so that it's prepared for adding it, attaching it. Let's just flip it over so you can see. There's my lovely little flower just there on the top. What I'm going to do is reinforce this outer edge. I'm just going to reinforce everything really quickly so that it's ready. And then what I'm going to do is bring it so that it's ready to attach to a piece of jewelry. So, for example, how I've used it in my um, the the Vienna bracelet. So there's there's a finished one. Oh no, it's not quite in screen. Here we go. So there's a finished Vienna bracelet just there with the micro crystals. Um, uh, you can see that just there. So to attach it, because what I've done in this particular instance is I've just attached it to this piece of netting. So essentially all it is, this bracelet, is a lovely piece of uh, netting, which I've put my sparkly micro crystals in it, um, which here, wait, I'll show you this. Uh, here we go. So there's my sparkly micro crystals. They look like seed beads, but they're actually lovely sparkly crystals on all the little vertices. See how that sparkles? If you haven't tried them before, check out the um, the micro crystal page on our website. You can find it in the menu. It's under crystals and then potentially it's Aurora, Aurora micro crystals on there. But yeah, otherwise the search function, the product code is AMC. So if you type AMC and then put a zero uh, and then press enter into the search bar, it will show you all of our colors of, of micro crystals. So they're, they're really worth having a look at. And um, if you want to check out the tutorial page, I've done uh, a live video just the other day um, which was on 
the chenille stitch with crystal studded chenille stitch so if you have a look either on 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 our facebook page or um on the bead spider tutorials page because that's a, a really good place for for learning tutorials um we've got all of our tutorials available there uh you will see the um the micro crystals evelyn i've done a bezel with the micro crystals evelyn send us a picture i want to see so um i'll see if i can find it where is that here we go this little thing here get featured on the show evelyn you've done a bezel with micro crystals i want to show it off send us a picture to live at beadspider.co.uk and i'll try and get it um on the show um, and Mary Jane Rios I've never done bead weaving because it seems so complicated but you make it easier to do good I'm glad this is why I'm saying you should share it with people and you know let friends know so that they can realize it is easy it's very easy to do you'd be surprised like if you've ever done any sewing for example you can bead weave I guarantee it to you um, so anyway yes if you want to get uh, send us your pictures to live at beadspider.co.uk you'll be on the show hopefully um on saturday um now let's just come back to me uh, i'll just show you because we don't need the diagrams anymore because i've already finished those i'm sort of going off piste a bit here and i'm just going to show you everything uh that i would do sort of to finish it off just now just because it's pretty much done what i like to do is just go through and reinforce things so a nice thing that you would do is reinforce your outer edge because you get that nice and firm you really pull in the together that lovely flower shape plus if you go through these bottom crystals again um you'll get that sort of lovely flower coming together and the and the and the pieces on the top sort of pop they really do sit on the top if you reinforce the base again but Anyway, I'll just go through a couple of beads and then I'll show you how we're, how you'll be ready to continue along with attaching it to your clasp. So if I just have a look on the bottom here again, um, let's just weave through. Let's pretend I, I did lots of reinforcing. You've just finished all of your reinforcing and you want to attach your clasp to your piece of jewellery, whatever it may be what you do now is one two three so we're going to go actually i'll do it on the next one because we're a little bit loose just here so let's pull this thread nice and firm and then there we go that definitely helped um another good thing to do at this point as well is tie some knots because that helps keep everything firm and tight so i might tie one little knot just here and get that under there and oh no you can't quite see it i haven't got it quite in screen there we go uh so carolyn i'm terrible at sewing but i love bead weaving <laughs> do you know what i've never really done much in the way of sewing the whole reason i do bead weaving is because of my dear mother jermaine she's she's bought, sort of brought us all up so my sister and i and lots of my cousins doing craft we've been doing craft from from the dawn of existence essentially uh, our existence at least um doing all crafts so i was never one much for for drawing or painting or anything my sister's definitely a uh quite good at, at doing those painting and artwork and things like that um she did a really interesting sculpture for her for for like a major work for her final year of high school she did the three graces maybe i'll see if i can find a photo and i'll show you it next weekend but anyway yeah we, we've done crafts mum's done silk painting and sewing and knitting and then quilting um what other things have you done jermaine i'm sure you're watching uh right now um Put in some comments and let us know and everyone else i want to know what other crafts you all do at home um other than just jewelry making because it makes for a fun chat and um uh, and i'd love to know the sorts of things that you also get up to as well as jewelry making because i'm sure not everyone is just doing the jewelry making they they it seems that crafters tend to have lots of different crafts on the go now if you weren't quite uh, if i guess i didn't really say what i was doing just then i just tied a little knot so that this thread is now tied nicely to my my base thread so you get everything nice and firm and then you can just tie some knots and then what we do so that we're ready i need to make sure that my thread my seed is coming out of this little seed bead just here in the middle so that is how you can 
attach it to things. Oh yeah, Jermaine, she made her own beads, lamp work, uh, lamp work beads with Dad as well. He really enjoyed that. I think he quite liked the science behind it because we're we're a relatively artistic family. Dad's um, like more the the film and television side of things, hence why we're we're able to to do these really clear and accurate tutorials is because uh, you know we've got his experience. To, with with film and television and things to really help to make them good quality um stacy said she's done chain mail in the past um i want to know what else what, what have other people done so anyway you can see i've just got my thread nice and firm now and it's coming out of this little seed bead just here at the center so essentially it's now in position um Oh, um, Evelyn, I just sent an email. I don't think it will matter too much, but the email address is in lowercase. I should change that so that it says it in lowercase on my little scrolling bit of text, but I'm pretty sure it's all lowercase. Oh, yeah, Jermaine did silver clay and silversmithing. We have this beautiful um, Japanese maple tree outside of our house in, in Sydney, and I remember mum once took one of the leaves and with the 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 silver clay she sort of painted this beautiful japanese maple leaf with the with the silver clay and then um and then put it in the oven and it it really really came together and it looked so beautiful and you could see all the veining through it and then i can't remember what was it like a sulfur type material that sort of gave it this greenish tarnish as well that looked really really cool um, so Anita works with polymer clay, beautiful. Um, Evelyn does glass painting and cross stitch. Oh, Evelyn, if you haven't uh, seen it before, have a little look um, at the Arazzo, which is on our website. It's spelt A-R-A-Z-Z-O. Um, Arazzo, which is the Italian word for tapestry. If you've if you've never tried it before, um, the the we we make little beaded pictures so it's a lot like your cross stitch but with um with beads essentially so have a little look and, and see what you think of it um but yes so anyway let's uh let's just finish off now i will just remind you you can see here now that i'm coming out of this bead we're ready to attach it to whatever piece of jewelry we want but i'll just remind you one last time about um Oops, sorry, uh, about what it is that is the sale is ending tonight. So that's the Venetian bracelet, which is this one just here, which I did the tutorial of that um, just the last week. So I did the clasp section of it last Wednesday, which is the crystal square toggle instruction tutorial. So if you didn't see that, go and have a look at that. And then on Saturday, I did also do the um the, the actual bracelet of the venetian so uh if you want to have a, a little look and you want to get those on sale watch the video and um uh yeah have, have a little look at the video and uh see what you think of that wait a minute let's just have a chat shall we uh yeah check out the video and grab it, the kits on sale. They are 10% off. The instructions are also on there. So if you're in the US and you don't want to pay postage, postage isn't expensive, by the way. Um, if you're in the US or Canada, it's flat rate £6.50, which uh, we, we even had an order just the other day where it was quite a bit bigger than 6 50 But, you know, we want to encourage you guys to, to try us out here in the UK. So we, we lock it in 6 50 It doesn't even matter if your order's 500 pounds will it'll still only be 650 for shipping um for those of you who are like our friend in nigeria who's joined us um and um also in malaysia i think it was monica in in malaysia uh in malaysia uh if you are ordering from us we do um because obviously we want you guys to get more bang for your buck because it's a little bit more expensive to post to these international places. So Australia as well, um, New Zealand. What we do, we do um, international postage invoices. So you put your order in, you don't pay for any postage then and there. And then what we do, we um, weigh your parcel, we package it all up, we get it all ready. And then what we do, we send you an invoice pretty much so that you're only paying for the postage that you're using. Because if we were gonna do it 
um, as a flat rate to, to like Australia or whatever, we'd probably have to do it at 20 pounds or even more. And if you're only placing a relatively small order, um, it does work out that it's a lot more cost effective for you guys to order that way. So uh, like, for example, we had a lady just from Malaysia the other day who placed an order and um, she, she only got a few items and they were very light. I think it was predominantly Delica beads maybe because we got lots of Delica beads. Um, and once we'd weighed it out and got everything ready, uh, it turned out that her postage was actually only, um, I think about under seven pounds and that's to Malaysia. So um, we, we, we try and do it so that it's as, as cost effective when it comes to postage for you guys uh, overseas and then Obviously, if you are in the UK, which a lot of you who are watching are in the UK, um, if you become a member on our website, which if you go on to the actual website and have a little look, which even if you're not in the UK, it's worth becoming a member, especially if you're getting patterns and things because you can access the downloads from your My Account page. Um, yeah, if you're in the UK and you're spending over £10, we give you free postage. So just sign up, become a member. It's free to become a member and you get free postage if you're spending over 10 pounds. Um, so yes, uh, don't forget, if you wanna be on Saturday's show, uh, where's the little thing, the button, here we go. If you wanna be on Saturday's show, I'll just pop it up just real quick, um, just one last time. Um, live at beadspider.co.uk, pop that onto, um, pop an email to us. Um, Anita, do you ship to South Africa? Yes, we do. Same process. It's the um, uh, invoice shipping. So just go on, place your order, and then we'll send you a little invoice for the shipping as cheap as we can do it for you. Um, so that's, that's really great. But yeah, send us your pictures, everyone. Go on, all lowercase, live at beadspider.co.uk and send us pictures and I'll try and get them shown on Saturday. If you don't think you'll be watching on Saturday though, um, tell us when you'd rather because I'm on Saturdays and Wednesdays. So if you can watch on Wednesdays, say show me this on a Wednesday so I can see it. Um, but otherwise, if you don't care, just, you know, just send us a photo where you are and your name. Um, but yeah, so yes, last chance. Uh, as I was saying, the Venetian bracelet is on sale. There's five different colors. Uh, each one being 10% off. And if you want to get all five colors, we do uh, we do, do double discount, which you get 20% off um, if you're getting all five. Uh, also, definitely have a little look at um, the jazz. We've got that coming. Oh, I never showed the beads. Aren't I silly? Um, here, I'll just show you some of the beads that we use. So I'll show you the jazz just here. This is the bracelet from the jazz. I was going to show you the, the beads because they're so lovely. Um, they're really, really interesting in shape. So usually when you use bicones, they're the same width as they are height. But the ones that we have at the minute, here we go. Let's just pop it over to me and I'll just get it in focus before I flick back over. Here we go. So here we go so these are the long bicones they're these beads just here so see how wait let's get a little closer and then i'll zoom i'll just get it into focus put my hand there no a little further there we go so yeah these are what the long bicones look like so they're like this just here so there we go you hopefully you can see them See how they're, they're sort of, it's the same sort of bicone shape, but they're elongated so that they're, they're, they're longer, right? Where's focus? There it is. So you've got that really lovely long shape that looks so elegant. And we do lots of different colors. I really like these ones just here, for example. Where's the focus point? Here it is. So there you go. You can really see the shape. But yeah, these ones here, they're like a black with a, we've got quite a few which have various different color fumed on because um, you can get sort of colors fumed on these metallic surfaces like for example wait here we go so there you go now you can sort of see the purple coming together there's like a purple one we also do a blue one which is this just here i'm going to show you how to use all of these uh during my tutorial of the jazz so um definitely have a little look on our website for the jazz 
uh, that's on there. This one is potentially my favorite color. I don't know why, I just really like oranges. But um, this one here, it's uh, it's like a, a burnt sort of ember sort of color, and then it has this fuming on it, which is almost pink. So it looks really spectacular. I really like that one. That one is one of our others. Um, there's also a really, really lustrous sort of champagne gold color, which is this one just here. See, look at that. How sparkly is that? They look spectacular. Jermaine also likes the orange. Evelyn likes the blue, it seems. Here's another blue that we do. But yeah, we have we have quite a few of these um, on the website. So definitely take a look at them because they're fantastic beads to use. So I'm going to be using those in my the jazz. There's the bracelet. You can see them there on the bracelet. But also they're here in the necklace. So if we have a little look, you can see there's lots of them in the tassel there at the bottom. Um, this is what I'm going to be doing on Saturday. Um, so, oh, Monica, how much do they cost? The elongated bicones, you get the long bicone, sorry, you get, I think it's a strand of 72 or so uh, for £3.95, I believe they are. Um, so, yeah, if you want to have a look, uh, they are on the the website, long bicones. Um and of course, uh, as per what I made in today's instruction, the little three by four crystals, we've got um, a really lovely uh, bundle that you get 20% uh, off of. So we do like a nice color range for you. So you can you can choose the the colors. Uh, sorry, you can you can get the bundle. If you're getting one, we'll choose you eight colors. If you want to get two bundles, we'll choose you a bigger range of colors so that you're getting. Um, variety. So if you even got like four or five bundles or something, we would try and give you as many different ones as we possibly can so that they are going to be different. Yes, Jermaine, Monica has, uh, Jermaine's just let me know, Monica, they are $3.95, those elongated bicones. So anyway, Saturday's tutorial, this stacked necklace, I think I might uh, do those because there's a lot of really fun and interesting components um, that you, we use in those. So that is the plan for Saturday. Um, but yeah, so um, I hope you've all enjoyed that little tutorial. If you want to be notified about future tutorials, let me just put it up here at the bottom. I've put it in the link. Um, if you want to subscribe to our, our newsletter, our emails, uh, we send emails out every time we're going to do a live video. You'll get a, a notification um, just before. Do you know what? I forgot my tea again. Why am I so useless? Um, yeah, so we send out an email every time we're going to be doing a live video. Also on Facebook, I'm I'm going to try. Today I wasn't so good with it, but I'm aiming that uh, because Jermaine and Andrew are back now, I should have a bit more time to try and get things organized for, for videos in advance. So I aim to, I hope to get the videos up and live so that you can put a little reminder, click on them um, for, for upcoming videos. I'm going to set a little um, post on Facebook and YouTube just after I finish this for Saturday's video. So if you're on Facebook, click the little um, reminder button, but also oh, I think, I think it's even on this video, both in Facebook and YouTube, there's a little bell to subscribe. And if you click on that, you'll get notifications. But definitely the best way to find out about it is up in the little description, or if you're on YouTube, maybe it's down. Um, I've got a link to subscribe to our newsletter, and then you definitely won't miss it because we send you an email. And if you miss the video then, it doesn't matter because by the time you come to it, probably I'll have it set up so that you can click that and you can watch it on demand later. So uh, I, I'll, I'll be doing that. Um, this video, by the way, if you if you miss the beginning, you can watch on demand later. Um, but yeah, so if you want to subscribe, that would be appreciated. Again, thank you for those of you who shared the video. I definitely appreciate that because um, hopefully I'm going to continue doing these videos every two, two a week, Wednesdays and things, uh, Wednesdays and Saturdays. Um, but yeah, that's, that's sort of the plan in the future. So the more you can help me out and the more we can spread the word and get people involved, uh, the better for everyone. Um, but yeah, so thank you all very much. I'm going to enjoy my, is it, is it warm? 
I'm going to enjoy my lukewarm cup of tea after this. I hope you all have a lovely Saturday afternoon um, or, well, depending where you are, I guess, um, uh, Saturday. I hope you all have a lovely Wednesday. It's uh, Wednesday night if you're in Australia, for example. I know Kelly's often watching from Australia. Um, it's uh, or, or if it's only just the morning, I hope you enjoy your, your Wednesday there. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching. I will see you all on Saturday when I make this beautiful jazz set on Saturday. Um, but until then, I will see you all soon. Definitely send us your photos to live at beadspider.co.uk so that you can be um, featured as well. And I will see you all on Saturday. Thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.